Hey, this is Doug Mann. Wanted to explain here this next project here that I posted on Thingiverse and kind of give those of you an idea of how to put this together that are maybe interested in doing so. First of all, I'm going to talk about the uh, prints that I've got here. Um, I printed these all in 0.3 millimeter layers with 1.2 millimeter walls and 0.6 millimeters top and bottom layers. Um, this here is the main hull. I've got the ends that um, you'll fit your bearings into and your rotor. Your rotor here, you'll have to print uh, two of the ends, one to go on each side with the uh, bearing standoffs on it. Uh, materials, these are the, uh, the bolts that I'm using. You'll see there's the 632 three quarter inch um, links. For those of you that live across seas, you may be able to find find a bolt that fits pretty close and maybe use use a uh, a tap to uh, to tap that out. You know, at the 1.2 millimeters, that's normally thick enough to uh, to get the uh, tap in there. I always use these when I when I do my bolts. You probably don't have to because it's plastic. The bolts will probably actually tap it for you where you don't have to worry about it. But I like to do that beforehand because I like to make sure everything's finished and that it fits flush. I think most everybody that's got an FDM printer, normally your bottom one or two layers is, is kind of flattened out. So you'll have to go through and either trim with, with a box cutter or sand or both uh, to get that layer flush with the, with the rest of the layers. As far as the bearings are concerned, um, I went with the, uh, the, the skateboard bearings. They're the easiest to get. You can get premium bearings. I normally recommend the, the ABEC 5 or, or higher. Uh, these are really good. I've used these in the past and I, I'm satisfied with those. You can probably find you a good oil to put in it that'll last probably as long as, as the, the Energizer here will last. Of course, eight millimeter bearings, you'll have to have some eight millimeter rod. I use stainless, it's non-magnetic. Uh, I get that from Robot Shop, which I believe is in Kansas. Um, they sell it at a really good price at different lengths. This one here is right at six inches length. As far as pressing the bearings in the uh, spaces provided, uh, you can do one of two things. Either you can use a, a press or you probably a little simpler you can just take a piece of dial rod um, leave your stator ends or put them on a flat surface place your bearings in there carefully and you can tap those in into place with no problem um, I like before I do that just to make sure that that my ends are sanded a little bit and uh, I don't have any edges sticking out if you put too much pressure even on those 1.2 millimeter walls, you're, you're liable to crack it. And of course, what's going to happen, your, your energizer or, or, or motor is, going to, is not going to run correctly. It's going to be out of, out of balance. It's not going to be lined up right. As far as your inserting your 8 millimeter rod into your rotor, what I like to do is I'll actually take my drill, insert my rod into the drill, and I'll run the rod rod in that way. It produces a little bit of heat, but if you try to drill these, and I've done them before, if you try to drill them, generally if you're doing it by hand, it's not going to be straight and your rotor is going to run um, out of balance. Uh, this is the best way that I find. I've got the 8 millimeter really close. It's probably slightly smaller. And once you, once you do that, it, it just fits perfect. It fits tight. I generally don't have to use a set screw. But those of you that want to go the extra step, um, there, there's you know easy solution there. It's just to drill a hole um, all the way through to the uh, shaft hole and tap for a set screw. Um, in the past, I've actually printed those in there, but I, I didn't want to do it this time. It's, it, it's just an extra step. Um, if that's what you want to do, but I, I just don't see the need to it. These, these in the past, the way I've done this, um, I've actually put a small, I've sanded the, the area slightly um, that's going to uh, to go in the, into the rotor, 
and I just use a uh, like a polyester glue like Gorilla Glue in there and it's it's held um, without having to use a set screw but those of you that want to do that you can flat spot it drill your hole and tap it um, that's a pretty easy fix for you the magnets that I'm using um, for this particular model there's eight slots here are eight slots for eight magnets the magnets that are you I'm using are one eighth of an inch thick uh, by half an inch by two inch uh, that's plenty of, of, of power for what I'm, I'm using it for here as far as the stagger is concerned um, you have an option uh, I'm actually going to use uh, some number eight steel shot that you use to fill or um, reload or, or load uh, shotgun shells uh, in these slots uh, that works really good I've used them on past projects and uh, Aaron Marikami put out a, a, a video describing the process for coating those and, and how you would, would go about preparing those before you do that um, which is basically just laying them in a flat surface and spray painting them uh, gray that way they're electrically or magnetically separate and they'll, they'll release the energy a lot faster but um, that's what I'm going to do uh, like I said you could probably just use it as an air core if that's what you wanted to do um, but for my experiment, what I'm working on, that's, that's going to be what works for me here. Um, you can see here, um, I'm kind of putting a couple different projects together. Uh, this is going to be close to the uh, um, Bedini Free en Energy Energizer project that he did, I believe, back in 1984 at the book. I've got a um, motor energizer here that's already got some energizer coils on it. But I'm looking to get some additional energy, so I'm going to have this energizer head on the back end, and it's just going to run as an energizer function, much like what is described in that book. So, of course, you know, if you're not familiar with that, um, Energy Science Forum is probably a good place to look. There's several others out there, but um, those particular moderators work closely with Bedini and his work. And um, they can probably you know, point you in the right direction of, of what's, what happens here with this, this type of uh, energy. Um, this is not going to be run as a conventional generator because what's going to happen if you run this fast in a conventional generator? Obviously, you've got some drag, so you'll probably have to use a DC motor instead of um, like an energizer because the torque is, is not going to be as much with the energizer or even a, a brushless DC motor with the advanced controls. Um, this is used to collect that, that uh, radiant energy that's described. Um, that's obtained by either using, um, you can use a, a modified Bedini circuit with a transistor to do it, much like Patrick has described on his, his channel. Or you can use, um, you can use like a reed switch to switch it and there's a, a, another couple of ways to do it and I'm not going to really get into here so that that being said this is not going to this is not going to hold a lot of heat or it shouldn't if it's wired correctly so you shouldn't have any problem with the plastic in this application uh, the radiant energy when you're collecting that uh, it just it runs a lot cooler than the conventional um, current energy that uh, that's traditionally pulled from a generator um, that's it. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to post um, either on the Thingiverse site or you can post uh, below this video. Thank you.